Welcome to Scoop Canada, your trusted source for uncovering the truth behind Canadian politics. Today, we delve into a contentious issue surrounding Canada's natural gas resources and their potential impact on both global emissions and the Canadian economy. In a recent article published in the Calgary Herald, Gwyn Morgan makes a bold assertion, suggesting that Canada's abundant natural gas reserves could serve as a catalyst for economic recovery independent of the Trudeau government's assistance. This viewpoint, echoed by Danielle Smith, underscores a growing sentiment among certain circles in Alberta. However, while the promise of leveraging natural gas to reduce emissions and bolster the economy is enticing, it's essential to critically examine the realities and implications of such assertions. The Liberal government's approach to energy and environmental policies has been met with criticism, but is it fair to solely blame them for the challenges faced by Alberta's economy? Moreover, while Danielle Smith may advocate for Alberta's interests, her stance must also be scrutinized. Is she truly championing sustainable and equitable solutions for all Canadians, or is her agenda driven by partisan interests? Join the conversation and share your thoughts with us. Can Canada's natural gas industry serve as a panacea for the country's economic woes, or do we need a more comprehensive and collaborative approach from all levels of government? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful discussions on Canadian politics. Before we move further, take a minute to visit our website, sign the petition demanding Justin Trudeau leave the office immediately, and sign up for our newsletters to get uncensored news in Canadian politics. In a scathing report from the Calgary Herald, Pierre Polyav's Axe the Carbon Tax campaign is hailed as a resounding success. However, the Conservative Party faces a critical challenge crafting its own strategy to reduce fossil fuel emissions. Paradoxically, the solution may lie in Canada's rich natural gas resources. The report highlights the potential of Canada's natural gas to not only reduce global emissions, but also revitalize a Canadian economy battered by the policies of the Liberal government. By exporting liquefied natural gas LNG to coal-dependent countries in the Asia-Pacific region, Canada could play a pivotal role in combating climate change while stimulating economic growth. Wood Mackenzie's study underscores Canada's geographic advantage in supplying LNG to Asia. With shorter shipping distances and cost-competitive pricing, Canadian LNG could meet the escalating demand in Northeast Asian markets. Despite promising prospects, the journey to actualizing LNG projects in Canada has been fraught with challenges. Regulatory hurdles and bureaucratic complexities have stymied many proposed projects, leaving LNG Canada as the sole survivor. This project, spearheaded by Andy Callitz, persevered through adversity with the terminal nearing completion and the first shipment set for mid-2025. The economic benefits of LNG development are substantial, forecasted increases in natural gas royalties and job opportunities, particularly for First Nations communities, paint a rosy picture of prosperity. However, the report highlights regulatory obstacles, such as the insistence on zero emissions hydropower for LNG production, which led to delays and increased costs. Moreover, the report criticizes the federal government's stance on LNG exports. Despite the potential for emissions reductions on a global scale, Canadian regulators have fixated on domestic emissions, hindering the progress of LNG projects. The Conservatives' proposal to include emissions reductions from displaced coal with exported LNG was rebuffed by the Trudeau administration, reflecting a narrow focus on domestic policies. As an alternative to the carbon tax, LNG exports emerge as a more effective and economically beneficial solution. The report contends that promoting LNG projects would attract significant investments and create tens of billions of dollars in economic, and economic benefits for Canada's private sector. It lambasts the carbon tax as economically destructive and politically divisive, contrasting it with the environmental benefits and economic opportunities presented by LNG exports. The report presents LNG export as a superior environmental and economic alternative to the carbon tax. It calls for a shift in government policies to prioritize LNG development thereby reversing Canada's decline and fostering a prosperous future. However, it also criticizes the Liberal government and Danielle Smith for their perceived failures in promoting LNG projects and addressing regulatory challenges. The report's scathing critique underscores the urgency of reevaluating Canada's energy policies and embracing LNG export as a catalyst for economic growth and environmental stewardship. It challenges policymakers to prioritize the long-term interests of Canadians and seize the opportunities offered by Canada's natural gas resources. In a recent tweet, Nate Horner highlights Alberta's potential to attract major global investors, boasting about the province's low taxes, minimal red tape, 
and proactive approach to job creation and economic growth. While Horner celebrates past successes in securing major investments, he fails to acknowledge the broader context of economic challenges facing Alberta. And despite Horner's optimistic rhetoric, the reality is far from rosy. Under the leadership of Prime Minister Trudeau and the provincial government, Alberta has struggled with economic downturns, job losses, and fiscal deficits. Trudeau's policies, including burdensome regulations and carbon taxes, have hindered Alberta's competitiveness on the global stage, making it less attractive to investors. Moreover, Danielle Smith's track record as a political figure does little to inspire confidence in Alberta's economic future. Her tenure as a member of the Legislative Assembly and subsequent political career has been marred by controversies and policy missteps, further eroding trust in her ability to drive economic prosperity in the province. While Horner's tweet may paint a picture of optimism, it fails to address the systemic issues plaguing Alberta's economy. Instead of focusing on superficial successes, policymakers should prioritize addressing underlying challenges and implementing policies that promote sustainable growth and prosperity for all Albertans. The recent reversal on Alberta's Bill 20, as reported by the Calgary Herald, which aimed to overhaul municipal government legislation, raises serious questions about the government's intentions and competence. The sudden shift in policy, prompted by widespread backlash, highlights the inadequacy of the original proposal and casts doubt on the government's ability to govern effectively. Danielle Smith's involvement in this debacle further undermines confidence in the government's decision-making process. As a prominent member of the United Conservative Party and a former leader of the Wildrose Party, Smith has been a vocal advocate for conservative policies. However, her support for Bill 20, which sought to expand the province's power to remove elected municipal officials and rescind local bylaws, demonstrates a lack of foresight and understanding of the implications for Alberta's municipalities. Smith's track record as a political commentator and pundit does little to inspire confidence in her ability to navigate complex policy issues and engage in meaningful dialogue with stakeholders. Her role in championing a bill that faced widespread opposition from municipal governments across the province reflects poorly on her judgment and leadership capabilities. Furthermore, the government's failure to provide clarity on the parameters of the proposed changes leaves room for interpretation and manipulation. Without clear guidelines, the province could wield its newfound authority arbitrarily, undermining the autonomy and integrity of local governments. Overall, the episode surrounding Bill 20, as highlighted by the Calgary Herald, exposes the flaws in the government's decision-making process and highlights the need for greater transparency and accountability. Instead of rushing through legislation without proper consultation, the government should prioritize meaningful dialogue and collaboration with stakeholders to ensure policies are in the best interests of all Albertans. Smith's involvement in promoting a bill that faced significant pushback from municipal governments underscores her lack of understanding of local governance dynamics and her failure to effectively represent the interests of Alberta's communities. This misstep further erodes public trust in Smith's leadership and calls into question her suitability for a prominent role within the government. Moreover, the government's decision to backtrack on Bill 20 without providing a comprehensive explanation or addressing concerns raised by stakeholders reflects a lack of foresight and strategic planning. It suggests that the initial proposal was hastily conceived and lacked thorough consideration of its potential impact on Alberta's municipalities. The Calgary Herald's report on this issue serves as a reminder of the importance of transparent and accountable governance. Albertans deserve elected officials who prioritize the well-being of their communities and engage in open dialogue to address concerns and find solutions that benefit all residents. As we reflect on this episode, it is crucial to hold our leaders accountable for their actions and demand greater transparency and integrity in the legislative process. The reversal on Bill 20 should serve as a wake-up call for the government to reassess its approach to policymaking and prioritize collaboration and consultation moving forward. Join us at Scoop Canada and share your thoughts on this issue. Do you believe the government's reversal on Bill 20 is a genuine acknowledgement of its mistakes, or is it merely a strategic move to mitigate public backlash? Let us know in the comments below.